What's up guys, it's Graham from the Scavengers, and I'm here with a review for Culture Shock. So uh, a while back, maybe about like a year ago, um, or at least my first like uh, individual video, like the first video with just Graham, I did a, uh, a let's play in the game Endless Space. So I figured for my, uh, my second only Graham video, it would be only fitting for me to uh, review Endless Space 2. <laughs> so Endless Space 2 came out, I believe the actual, like the alpha came out last fall, and the game officially released in May of 2017. So the game's only like five months old technically, but like it's it's still undergoing changes. There's still patches. There's still more content being released, and it's all free. It's not DLC. Um, and yeah, so that like uh, and just recently, I finally got my hands on the game. I got it on sale. Um, and I uh, literally like about a week ago, I finished my first uh, campaign, my first like kind of playthrough. Um, and I, there's nothing more I can say except for I, I, I loved it. I love the game. Uh, so I'll go through a little bit like the, like the recent history with the, the developers. So the developers Amplitude are kind of, they were a small indie group until recently they got, um, I got merged or bought out by uh, Sega, which is awesome. I feel like out of any like gigantic company to get bought by, Sega is one of the good ones. Better than EA. So, uh, and that... Sega really helped them produce Endless Space 2. Gave them a lot of resources, a lot of time, a lot of, I don't know, and it really paid off. So let me kind of jump into the game itself, or describe the game. Um, for those of you that are familiar with the Endless series, um, maybe played Endless Space, Endless Legend, this game is technically a sequel to Endless Space 2, but it's it's not so much like Endless Space, and it's more like Endless Legend. So to kind of jump into my description of Endless Space 2, I kind of need a little bit of backstory here. So Endless Space 1 is a typical turn-based strategy game, space-themed. It's a game about, like, you have a little star cluster, and you explore, and you colonize more star clusters, you build up armies, you find other aliens, and you have to befriend them, or you kill them. It's, it's a typical uh, 4X genre. So expansion, exploration, uh, exploitation, and extermination. So that, that game was very, uh, kind of its own. But then the second game in the, in the Endless series is Endless Legend, which plays a lot more like Civilization. It's a tile-based um, game where you're just on one planet, you're building cities, you're expanding, you're building armies, you're killing other people. It's just like Civ. So Endless Space 2 is technically a sequel to Endless Space 1, but it plays so much more like Endless Legend. It is extremely similar in many different ways. And that's partially why I, I've seen some bad reviews for Endless Space 2, because the people that kind of just went from Endless Space to Endless Space 2 missed that Endless Legend, and that's a very key part of the series that you kind of have to play to understand and adjust to the series. But nevertheless, um, that, that, that's kind of one, one negative part of the, the game, is that it's, it's more like Endless Legend, but then again, I really liked Endless Legend, so I just, I just have so much love for the series. I'm going to play whatever Amplitude releases. Um, let's jump into more positives. First of all, the game is so pretty. <laughs> the art for this game is fantastic. Actually, like it was about like a, a couple weeks ago, they released the uh, the art book for Endless Legend, and I just literally, like, I it was Christmas morning for me. I downloaded it, and it was like 140 pages of just beautiful fan art. And not, not that fan art, uh, game, game art. So, like... Uh, pieces that they use in the game, pieces they haven't used, concept art. Ah, oh, it was so pretty to go through. It's it's amazing. Endless Space and Endless the Endless series, the people, the art people there are fantastic. I love their artistic style. I love I love everything they make. The games that they make are so pretty. And it, they've only gotten better with Endless Space 2. Um, other things that if you are uh, jumping from Endless Space to Endless Space 2. Well, so um, the FID system, so food, industry, dust, and science, that's kind of like the core four like resources of Endless Space. Well, now we have FID-Z. So it's all of those plus, um, what's it called? Uh, with the fifth I, so it's food, industry, dust, science, and influence, which is kind of like I mean, it's, 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 it's more political. It's your political influence. It's how much sway you ca your words carry as a, like, a leader of a, a, a whatever, um, leader of a civilization or a species. Um, and that makes things interesting. 
Because it, it, it kind of it determines how well you can like negotiate with other races. It sort of influences how like well liked you are by your people. Um, it gives you certain bonuses. It's interesting. Um, otherwise, I mean, it, it's a pretty pretty standard upgrades with any sequel. Um, it plays better. Uh, new races, new like combat. Combat's different now. Combat's a lot more developed. It's still the typical like it's turn based, so there are three phases. A uh, lot more. Actually, no. I take that back. Combat is still the same kind of simulated combat that we had in Endless Space, but Endless Space it always went long, medium, melee. Endless Space Two, you can choose the the range at which you fight in. So if you have a lot of like rocket, like or if you like to use like rockets or explosives um, on your ships, then you mainly play the long and medium game because that's where rockets are most effective. But if you have kinetic weapons, um, you want to be in melee. So like now combat's kind of interesting because um, like at the beginning of a battle, if you have kinetic weapons and your opponent has rockets, then you make a mad dash to try to get into melee as quick as you can. Um, meanwhile, your opponent's going to try to bombard you with rockets and to kill you off before you get into melee. But if the kinetic ships get into melee, then the rockets are kind of screwed because they can't fire back. So I don't know. It's, it's an interesting kind of rock, paper, scissors. Um, combat is both simple and very strategic at the same time. Overall, I am a huge fan of the series. I like the new updates. I like everything they've done with it. And I can't wait to play some more. I've only played through, I've played through one, like full, complete, like I, I won. Um, I, I could have continued and like wiped out everyone else and won by conquest, but no, I won around like turn 170 with a science victory. Um, so I don't know, I'm looking forward to playing some more, making my own factions. Uh, I haven't played on the biggest setting yet. I played on like a medium map. I can't wait to play on like a, a super large map with like 10 different sieves and like 300 different solar systems. Oh, it's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> so more or less, um, uh, again, it, it's kind of a niche game. If any of you out there have actually played in this space, I'd love to talk about it more because I have so much love for the series and the devs, and just everything about the <laughs> everything about the entire endless 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 game series. Oh, I have endless love for it. <laughs> Colin, please <laughs> leave that in. <laughs> that's 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 perfectly cheesy enough. Um, so I don't know. Um, if any of you guys have played it, hey, like let me know if what do you guys think about it. Um, if you haven't played it and you have a PC, hey, it's, I think it was 20 bucks. Um, it's a great turn-based strategy game if you're into those, especially if you like the sci-fi genre. Um, and I can't, I can't, like, recommend the art style enough. I can't describe how amazing, uh, the art style of the game is. It's definitely one of the biggest perks. I have, like, 20 different wallpapers on my, <laughs> on my computer that are just endless space, endless legend, endless everything, like, uh, backgrounds. Because it's wonderful, and I love the series. Um, so I don't know, this has been an episode of Col Culture Shock. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more reviews and interviews in the future. Um, look out for some of those. Look out for, uh, I don't know, eventually I'm going to review some of these guys. I'm going to review some of these guys, like get some, like my, uh, I don't know, do a manga review, do a, I don't know, something, I don't know. Well, we'll see what I'm going to do. This guy's the limit. <clears throat> so this has been another episode of Culture Shock. My name is Graham. I'll talk to you guys later. Hey everyone, it's Colin. Uh, I just wanted to jump in here at the very end to say that we are in the process of recording a whole bunch more reviews um, from quite a few people within the group, uh, but we're also in the process of setting up some interviews with artists and content creators who have stuff that they want to be shared with the world um, and that uh, you know may want to have some sort of um, you know video about their process or about the things that they create. Um, and so if you're someone who's like that and you would like to talk about any kind of project that you're working on, um, whether it's you know art that you you know draw, whether it's music that you make, whether it's a film project that you've worked on, anything of you know related to the arts, um, you know, let us know, um, and you know we'll set up something to kind of have one of us uh, reach out to you and set up something to do that uh, for you. Uh, so anyway, thank you for joining us on episode three of Culture Shock, and we will see you guys next week. Thank you.